Hello and welcome to the Salon Coefficient, a series of video reviews in which I'm going to take a nuanced and critical, in-depth look at board games. You will not find detailed walkthroughs here or how to play the game. Instead, I'm going to start with the commentary and that will be what I focus on in these videos. So if you're looking for a way to play any of the games here, specifically this is going to be Isle of Sky by Alexander Pfister and uh, Andreas Pelican. Um, anyway, if you're looking to learn how to play this game, you will not find it in this video. I suggest other videos out there, there are quite a few of them. Anyway, just type in Isle of Sky walkthrough, you'll find some better stuff than what you'll, what you'll be looking for here is more of a review nature. So review, critique, commentary, that sort of thing. Um, specifically, the silent coefficient is what I'm calling the game's length to its weight ratio. So how long does the game take versus how much overhead is there to play the game, as well as depth is taken into consideration as well. Um, I think that that is a very important thing to consider. A lot of times you hear this game is great, and you don't really know quite how much it's going to apply to you because we're all looking for something different. So I'll try to explain why it is that I have feelings of a certain way about a game, why my opinions are a certain way, and uh, discuss the Salon coefficient as a part of that. So Isle of Sky is a smallish box game, so not exactly a huge game. Um, and it was released in 2015, so it's been out just a little while, and there's supposed to be some sort of an expansion coming out. Anyway, uh, the game is about building your own little version of the Isle of Sky, your own little section, you know, like, you, what you're doing here is your tile laying, okay? If anybody has played the game Carcassonne, you're going to be taking these tiles, and you're going to be adding it to your own private sort of castle board. Um, that is where it's a little bit different than Carcassonne. Carcassonne, you're building an entire city and everybody's laying on the same place. Here in Isle of Sky, you're, gonna be, you're going to be building your own castle. So it's going to lose a little bit of that interaction there, but it's going to make up for it in some other ways. So, in Isle of Sky, first of all, let's talk about the components. Um, all of the tiles in this game are a very standard, sturdy quality with nice artwork. It is, albeit, a little bit cartoonish. And that is because the artist, Clemens Franz, known um, originally, I knew of him through Agricola, but if you can see here, his uh, people and his animals tend to be a little bit cartoonish. And you, if I hold this still enough, maybe you can see that that sheep is kind of like smiling. But anyway, it's, it's cartoonish. What I find is that tends to make his games appeal to a wider audience, though those that are at about the level where I'm at, where I like... I know that I like this style of game. I know that I like um, a strategy game with indirect interaction, a game about building up my own little area. I know that I like that, and I would say that generally it's not quite as lifelike as, say, Dennis Lohausen, um, but I really do appreciate Clemens Franz artwork, and actually I would maybe put it above there just because above um, Lohausen, which I think is the other industry standard for this style of game. Um, just because I really do like the cartoony aspect of them. I especially like it when a game has got some really mean stuff you can do, and then the cartoony artwork sort of makes it seem a little bit more fluffier than it is. Anyway, uh, that's just my own personal thoughts on it, though. Obviously, I could play a game if it's components. Here, they're very functional. I do like that about it, so very functional components. Um, you've got a board, and then most everything in the game is all going to be cardboard and... Uh, Got cardboard tiles. The only thing that's not cardboard is a few wooden score markers and this nice big bag. You can see the bag is really big because you're going to be drawing tiles out of it. These tiles are also nice and big too. Functional components, I like them. The rule book's very short and simple. It's only like six pages front and back and it involves a lot of different examples and stuff. Very, very good. Anyway, let's talk about what you're going to do in Isle of Sky. You are building up your own area of the board and to do that though, it's going to be a little bit different than Carcassonne. In Carcassonne, the way that you're filtering tiles is just by drawing the tile out of the bag, you got to place that one. Here, you're going to actually draw three tiles every round. And then you have to decide which one of these three you do not want to be available to you or to any other player in the game. Then, once you've decided that, you're going to have to price the other two tiles. And here's the kicker. Whatever price you put on them, you have to, you will lose that money. You have to pay it. At the end of the round, you will lose whatever money is on that. And so you've really got to choose, you know, like how much am I going to put these tiles for? If a tile isn't going to do anything good for you, then you might price it 
low because you want somebody to take it. You want the money from it. If a tile is going to do something really good for somebody else, so you might price it high hoping to get money from them. So the thing is the economy is a really important part of this game. And the economy is something you don't even have to worry about in Carcassonne. So um, that's one really important thing here, and it adds a really crunchy decision every time that you draw these tiles out. You're going to be looking for, you know, which one's important to me, what's important to everybody else, and then thus you're going to have to set your prices and choose which one you're going to get rid of. It's a nice decision that everybody makes simultaneously, so it really reduces the amount of time that you're going to be playing this game when everybody's making that decision together. You'll then start with a first player and go around, so it's a little bit frustrating if you're like the first player and you don't have any money, so you have to pass and then other people can buy up your tiles, you can end up in around um, only getting to add one tile or even less. I mean, if, if you don't buy any tiles and people buy both of your tiles, you're not going to add any tiles um, to your board and that's not a very successful strategy. Believe me, big money is not a way to win in Isle of Sky. <laughs> Anybody who's played it with me can tell you that. Um, all right, so the tiles, though, are going to sometimes have pre-printed scoring. Those can make them more valuable, depending on people's setups. And it's all going to be making you make a little bit of a puzzly decision about where you're going to place it on your player board um, because you're going to be scoring points based on what is on your player board. And I've been really wishy-washy about that because that's one of the coolest parts of the game. There is four tiles that you're going to be playing based off of. So you're going to be ha have four different scoring tiles. And the thing is, you're drawing out of a pool of 16 of them in the base game? No, maybe 12. I forget exactly, but it's it's quite a few. I think there's a ton of different ones. And not only do these tiles matter in terms of what you score for, but the order they come out in also matters. Because you're going to be scoring, at the end of every round, you're going to be scoring specific, um, specific scoring tiles. So as you can see here, this is the A scoring tile. It's going to score once in the first round, once in the third round, once in the fifth round, and then that's it. So you got to figure out when you're going to do that. If you see this B tile is, is then your two, four, six. C tile, though, is, and D tiles are going to be much more throttled towards the end of the game. So things sort of ramp up. You know, in your first two rounds, you only got to worry about one scoring tile, and then it just gets more and more. The thing that really is genius about Isle of Sky, though, is that the scoring tiles have a nice balance between things that you can just, you know, like simple ones like this, where you just get points for a certain uh, decal printed on your on your tiles. That's all that it matters. Other things are for actually trying to enclose areas. So um, there are different types of terrain, and when you um, totally partition off a specific type of terrain, you'll get points based on this scoring tile. That's not always in the game, though. Other ones, there are roads. You don't have to connect them, but this one will give you points if you do. Um, you're also going to be getting income off whiskey barrels, that, which has nothing to do with these scoring tiles, but I didn't talk about it, and that's another interesting thing. You get income every round. The more whiskey barrels you get, the more income you get. Though it's not as impactful as it might seem because you're getting one extra dollar per round, and you already start with an income of five, and people are going to be paying you. It's, it's a pretty loose income, a loose economy, I should say. There's quite a bit flowing into it. Um, anyway, you're, you're going to have other ones where you're trying to set collect, each of these is going to change the game quite a bit. This one's an area majority scoring. I mean, uh, whoever has the most whiskey barrels. This one is for every in every one of these types of tiles in your largest enclosed area. The thing is, guys, there's tons of these different types of tiles. Every single time you play this game, it's going to feel vastly different, not only based on which of these you get, but what order they come up in. The tiles that come out of the bag are going to dictate what you can do in terms of how you can manipulate to get the most points out of these scoring tiles. But really... I love a game that has this type of variety between plays. So the type of variety here is just, just incredible, and I cannot wait to see where they go with it, though if they have no expansions and nothing else comes out for this game, it is still a huge amount of content that you get in here. It's, it's like a Carcassonne that doesn't ever get old, doesn't ever get to the same, you know, oh, there's that strategy, you're sitting there hoping for this specific tile to come out, you're always on your toes here, you're always getting presented with something different. My favorite types of tiles specifically are the ones, and I don't want to play with a game of all of these, but the ones that encourage you to build a specific shape out of your cast, out of your, your you know, tiles. So an overarching shape, and I really find that those mix together well if you get those together with other types of scoring tiles. So you can get a really nice nice, balanced, interesting game, and in a lot of ways it reminds me of the type of replayability you'd see in Kingdom Builder with its scoring goals. So it's almost like a little bit of a mixture there of an, econo an economic version of Carcassonne with 
the scoring type of king, kingdom builder in it. Um, so the game itself is says on the box it plays two to five players. And I would say that that's not exactly the best way to take it. Um, a five-player game can really feel like things are out of your control. And a four-player game, not everybody is first player the same amount of time, so it can feel a little frustrating that way. That's a, that's a minor complaint, though. I do think it plays okay with four. I prefer it with three. And even with two, it can be okay. Obviously, with two, you have way less tiles that you're seeing, so you have less effect on what type of tiles you have access to. And um, that's an issue there. But I do think that that two, two and three, um, with two, it can be this game can be knocked out in like 20 minutes. So in three, it goes up to about a half hour, 40 minutes. Um, I really do like that length of the game, considering all the decisions that I'm making. You've got certain aspects of the game that are that are simultaneous, so you're you're engaged throughout that. You've got simple decisions to make on your player mat um, when you're not player mat, but more of a you know your own private. Uh, tile castles that you're adding on to. You have restrictions. You can only put mountains next to mountains, and and so C couldn't go there. You've got some simple things that you're trying to do there, some some goals you're trying to meet, um, some overarching ones that are not going to change from game to game, like getting income and getting these, these tiles that have scrolls on them and getting points for those. But then you've got these scoring tiles that are always going to change. Um, anyway, though, there is a nice little spatial aspect to the game there. And ultimately, you're only going to be playing this game for a short amount of time. So... The Salon coefficient on this game is very high. Once again, another 9 out of 10 because this is a short game that gives you an awful lot of decisions to be able to make in it with an absolute ton of variety that doesn't hurt anything whatsoever. So if you're at all interested, if you like Carcassonne and you're looking for something that's just a step more, I would check out Isle of Sky. I would even say that it's easier to teach than Carcassonne in some ways because your scoring tiles are just right out there. You can see what you're going to be scoring points, points for in this game. Um, however, your decisions are not as easy as in Carcassonne, and that's what I'm looking for. Tough decisions in a nice little package. Check out Isla Sky. Thank you.